G'day Rangers, today on Ranger Jamie's Adventures, we're off to find out if I can survive in the bush without water. In this episode, we'll be looking at how you can find fresh water, if you can drink from a plant, if it's safe to drink rainforest water, and perhaps along the way, see if I can explore a secret hidden waterfall. Now this sure is one tough environment to explore all in one day, but I reckon we can do it. We don't have much time to waste. I need to find a leader by the end of today to survive. So you're out in the bush and he's stuck with no water. What do you do? Well. It's a bit hard, but try not to panic. So with my help today, I'm gonna to be teaching you guys a few simple steps of how you can stay alive and to find fresh drinking water. Follow me. Now, brought a little water container with me, but guess what? This one litre canteen container, it's completely empty. So. A lot of people might think, hang on, Ranger Jamie, there's the ocean there. We definitely don't want to drink any of the ocean water because as we all know, there's a lot of salt inside. What does salt do to the human body? Well, several things. Lead to dehydration, exhaustion, give you quite a few headaches and also something pretty disgusting, diarrhea. That's right, you'll actually poo a lot if you drink a real lot of salt water. So what we're gonna do, I think the best bet is to get to the top of that ridge up there. Once we're up top, it's a bird's eye view. I'll be able to read a lot of the, the topography, which means a lot of the landscape, all of the mountain ranges, the valleys, and hopefully we'll be able to find some water with my help today. Before I start, rule number one, never rely on trying to find only one source of water. My energy right now is precious, and I don't want to waste it walking hundreds of kilometres looking for a waterfall that might not even be there. If you can, use the environment to help you prepare for the worst. If I find water, it might be dirty and I'll need to clean it, so just quickly, I'm going to search this beach for anything that might be useful later on. How good's this? So what I'm trying to do is before I start climbing the mountain, I'm trying to use our environment here, the beach and the rocks, as a really, really great resource. How? I'm trying to find things that have been washed up. Now this is a pretty sad sight. It is plastic and it is in our oceans, but this will definitely help me because when we go deep into the bush, if I find some dirty water, I can purify it and make it clean with this guy. Let's see if there's anything else. Another one. I've seen a little bit of sand now. Over here. Gotta hurry before the water comes in. Sand, you might be thinking, why am I using sand? Well, this stuff will definitely come in handy later on. As I continue on my journey uphill, I slowly pace myself. I don't want to rush and use all my energy at once. I need to conserve it, slow and steady as I go. So this is exactly what I'm looking for, Lamandra. It's water from a plant. Come take a look. So, this stuff, believe it or not, found on the whole east coast of Australia. This guy right here, this is only a little bundle, they can grow absolutely huge. Now this right in the center has little droplets of fresh water that you can actually pull out and this could keep you alive for a couple of weeks, it's really cool. So what you do is this stuff grows all the way from Queensland all the way down to Tassie on the east coast of Australia. Probably about 10, 20 kilometers inland, you'll find this stuff almost everywhere. What you do is you have to be really careful because the outside is really sharp. You can't actually pull it because it's just like razor blades. You could cut your hands. So you get in real carefully right in the middle and you just pull out one. There you go, take a look at that. Nice and clean, get rid of the dirt. This white part kind of looks like a shallot or an onion. And what you do is you chew the end. There's quite a lot of water in there. Chew it. Tastes a little bit, um, 
not so much salty, but just a little bit much like an onion. And what you can do is take a few of this stuff. You can leave it in your backpack for a couple days and whenever you're thirsty, you can just drink it. It's a great way to keep you alive in the bush. Humans can survive for about seven to 10 days without food, but only two days without water. At least 60% of our body is made of water and every part of our body needs it to keep on functioning. Water acts as a lubricant for our joints. It regulates our body temperature through sweating and breathing and also helps to flush out waste. The average human needs to drink at least eight cups of water per day to stay healthy. With the amount of exercise that I'm doing today, I'll be losing a lot of water, so I need to find it fast. As I make my way to the top of the escarpment, I'll be able to gain a better viewpoint of my surroundings. As I mentioned earlier, if I can find a valley with thick, luscious green plants, then that's a pretty good sign that there will be running water close by. And what does that lead to? A waterfall. But first, I want to show you guys something pretty cool. So what exactly are we looking for? So we're looking for a eucalyptus tree. They're everywhere. That we want to put a bag over the top of to find some water. Because what we're going to use is instead of waiting for rain or to find puddles of water, we're going to use the transpiration. Now that's a word which means that these leaves, they've got lots of moisture in them. So when the sun hits them, they transpire, which means water evaporates from the leaf. And that's what we want to catch. But we need a real healthy looking tree. Now, I know it might seem really silly, but um, carrying one of these with you is a really good idea. Not only if it rains can you capture water, you can use it as shelter if you get in a, a bit of a situation, but uh, you can capture water from the tree. Make sure the bag's done up on all sides except one. Did you know that a really large gum tree can evaporate over 100 litres of water per day? And this is what we want to capture. All I have to do now is wait just a few hours for nature to do all the hard work for me. This will give me a chance to sit, wait, and conserve my energy. So we've waited a couple of hours, and now let's see how much we can fill this bad boy up with. Just as I thought, take a look at the moisture just on the inside right there. Look, it's already moving its ray down. It's on the inside, everything, as the sun heats it up. And that, it may not be much water, but just that amount right there is enough to keep you alive for at least a couple more hours, even a couple of days. Now, I don't want to cut it, I just want to undo it and put that in my water bottle. Now, there's been recent evidence of bushfires here, which you can tell. And what I'm looking for is a little bit of charcoal, because charcoal is a natural water purifier and it can actually clean water. So if I get little chunks, if we do stumble across um, like a pond or like a dirty patch of water or something we're not too sure about that we can drink, we can put this in the water purification system and drink it. Now I want to get as high as possible so I can see the top of the hills, which is called the ridge line. If I can get a really good view and see the types of trees that are growing, I'll know which direction to head. I'm looking for thick, dense tree canopy. That'll be a pretty good sign that there's water nearby and perhaps even our waterfall. But first, I need to get up higher for a better view. So I found exactly where I want to head. And that is about 12 o'clock this way. Why? Because there's a whole heap of green foliage and green leaves, which means they're really healthy, which means a whole lot of water. So I reckon that's exactly where we need to go. As I make my way through this blistering heat and rough terrain, I can feel my body starting to slow down. I need to find water and I need to find it fast. Can you hear that? That sounds like a waterfall. I reckon it is. Hey Luke, watch out for here, mate. You right? Yep. Sweet. Now, this is a great sign. Because if you take a look behind me, these are cabbage palm trees. Now, I know for a fact that these guys require quite a lot of water in order to survive. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of them. So nearby, there's gonna be a creek or fresh water running somewhere really, really close. Let's go. We're getting close. We've reached the thick, lush rainforest environment, which means one thing, plenty of water nearby. Now, 
Now this tree has an endless supply of water with the creek. Look how big it is. Far out. That's huge. <sighs> Let me get it all in. I know. Look at that. That's crazy. Endless supply of water. Its root system must be near a creek. Wow. Just 50 metres further and we've done it. We've found water. But I'm not going to drink it just yet. Let's get closer to the waterfall to find out why. So we've found the waterfall. Now this water's probably pretty clean because it's probably travelled around tens and tens of kilometres and naturally been filtered with a lot of the rocks and the sand, etc. Just to be on the safe side, before I drink this water, we need to filter it. Come around here. Now this water might look clean, but we don't know what's upstream. It could be filled with bacteria. Now as much as I want to drink this water straight away, just to be on the safe side, we're going to filter it first. So remember earlier, when we are down at the beach, we got a couple of these? Well, this is where it's going to come in handy. Likewise, we also got a fair bit of charcoal from the burnt out area of the trees. All of this stuff we're going to use. So we have some fern just from around the corner here because we're in a rainforest climate now around this waterfall. We've got some sand and the water that I just collected from the creek. So let's clean it. How do we do it? Add in the charcoal. Because charcoal acts as a natural purification system. Then the sands. So we want all of the large sediments in the water to be trapped and this is what catches it. Then we put in the ferns. Finally, the rocks. Because the rocks cap capture the big chunks from the dirty water. And then you pour this on top. And then the other half of the bottle, which we cut off from the top, is a clean drinking cup. Just as simple as that. Oh, that's amazing. Well, what an adventure. From climbing mountains, drinking from plants, capturing water using the sun, to discovering a gorgeous secret hidden waterfall. While keeping in mind, due to pollution, some water is never suitable to drink. With knowledge of your environment, it could save your life. Stay safe, and I'll see you on our next Ranger Jamie adventure.